Nine months touring in Europe, is that possible? We've just been to the visa office in Manchester. Our plan for the year included five months sailing coastal waters of France and Italy, starting in late April, with a brief return home for family commitments during summer. Shuffling time with non-Schengen countries wouldn't work for us. Somehow, we needed to extend our stay. Last year before summer, we toured in France for 54 days before touring Canada for eight weeks, then returned to France in September for 30 days. That year, our time in Europe was within the 90 in 180 day Schengen visa limits. There are many European travel guide videos with Schengen's own explanations, but in brief, it is a freedom of travel area for residents of an EU country or residents of a non-EU country signed up to the agreement. Anyone else visiting these countries must have an entry visa and abide with the time limit rules, or face fines and possible refusal to re-enter. Currently, UK citizens with an ordinary passport are granted entry without a visa, but time in the zone is restricted to 90 days in a rolling 180-day period. How could we overcome time restrictions and still have multi-entry access for more than three months? Also, would it be possible for us to tour Europe for nine months? More about this later. After successfully completing the application and arranging the Manchester interview, we spent many evenings gathering the evidence and information required by TLS Contact, who are the appointed visa agent in the UK. Sick and very nervous. That was ridiculous. <laughs> well, you've not even said where we've been. We've just been um, applying for a France long stay visa, which means that we can hopefully be in France longer than three months. It's a, tem a temporary long stay. Uh, yes, temporary long stay visa. But what a feeling, it's weird. It's oh. so strange because you're there with everybody else. There's lots of people there. But you're having to sign your name and the hands were shaking. Just <laughs> What's that all about? I know, I just felt nervous. I know, it's weird. Anyway, so, so anyway we'll... Hopefully 15 days, it says working days. Yeah. So fingers Bit crossed. Close, yeah, anyway, so uh, that's done now. Sorry, we're just going to go back for a cup of tea. All right? Yeah. Feel happy? Well, it's just done now, so let's crack on. <laughs> So tell me, do you think you're going to be successful in your application for a long stay visa? I hope so. I don't think, I don't know what else we could have done. Do you think we were well prepared? I think we were extremely well prepared. Good. We killed lots of trees. Yeah. And they, did they take all of the trees that we, we felled? No. No. Some of the stuff we copied because we did individual copies for both of us, as in each of us. But. He actually said, well, if they only want different documents, if they're different for the spouse. Yes, so that was my, that was the finance yeah. part. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Have you calmed down yet? Yeah, I think so, but yeah, I did. I got quite nervy. Yeah. Cup of tea time. Cup of tea. What we hoped to get was a VLS-T, which is a visitor long-stay temporary visa valid for a fixed six month period with multi-entry included. What we got was a recall to go back to Manchester. And last night, about eight o'clock, I got an email mm -hmm. saying that they had a technical issue with the biometric. So we had to come back. So we've just driven this morning after phone calls and so on, trying to get through to them, back to Manchester. And uh, here we are about to go into the TLS. We've gone through the process of having our photographs taken again because the photographs that we had before were the wrong size but they could have checked that at the counter when they took them and also we've had the biometrics done for Sheena again because her name is too long. And the consulate won't accept it because yeah. there's 24 characters but they only take 25, including spaces, which, so it might... Which, again, good. could be checked at the point of actually submitting all the documents, rather than making people change their plans and drive a five-hour round trip just to come back. It took, us, took half an hour for us to be seen when, after we arrived. The young lady that actually looked after us was very helpful. 
Our flight back to options was booked, but now our passports were in France, submitted with the plans and evidence we provided. We waited for the return of our passports by courier and confirmation that our application had been approved. The process to apply for a long-stay visitor visa takes time. Don't leave it too late. Start at the application page to set up an account. Follow it through and remember you are applying for a temporary visa exceeding three months. If you're applying from outside the UK, the French visa site lists your country-specific visa submission centres. You'll be guided through to complete the application, which can be saved at various points to return to later if needed. Once the initial application is completed, you will receive a unique reference which is used to book an appointment at your chosen submission centre. They will take the application fees and any additional charges associated with the process. The French authorities want to know your full itinerary, including where you will live and visit. In our case, we lived on board our boat, cruising the south coast of France from Port Napoleon. At the TLS office, we handed over our plans and boat papers along with security, health and financial information, demonstrating our ability to be self-sufficient and insured, so as not to be a burden on the French state. If your application is successful, the visa starts on a date you choose and ends up to six months later. Within the validity period, you can enter and leave France multiple times, but you should leave France on or before the expiry date and make sure your passport is stamped. Here's the best bit. How can you stay in Europe for nine consecutive months? During the validity period of the long stay visa, you can visit other Schengen countries using the 90 in 180 day rule. Then leave with an official exit stamp and go to a European country that is not signed up to the Schengen Agreement, such as Albania, Montenegro, Romania, Cyprus, Turkey and Bulgaria. Keep in mind that to get an entry stamp, an exit stamp must be in your passport, and to get an exit stamp, an entry stamp is required. So always get your passport stamped and check the date is correct. Border officials look for the most recent date stamp in your passport, and each date stamp shows clearly if the border passing was an entry or an exit. For boat owners, it is sometimes easier to employ the services of a shipping agent who will handle the clearing process at ports of entry, but this is not always necessary. There it is, six months in the Schengen area of Europe and three months in the non-Schengen area is possible without having to leave Europe. Okay, so it's a little bit involved, but it's doable. Thankfully, our application was approved and the passports arrived a few days before our flight back to Marseille. In our opinion, France has a sensible approach and a workable system, allowing people from outside the EU into their country to spend hard-earned cash. Well done, France. The EES automated system will be launched after the Paris Olympics to monitor and control European entry and exit. This system will eventually replace the use of all manual stamps across the zone but we don't know how long that will take. In addition, the ETS automated system will gather information for security, immigration and health checks. This system is expected to go live in mid-2025 and will require UK citizens to apply for a travel visa to enter European countries. The cost is likely to be seven euros and the visa will be valid for three years. Bear in mind, these systems have been delayed several times, so keep an eye on the news.